Welcome to CCN, Conscious Consumer Network. This is my show, Paula Flynn. Today, I am interviewing Matthew LaCroix. He has written The Illusion of Us, The Suppression and Evolution of Human Consciousness. I love the title, and I absolutely loved the book, Matthew. So thank you very much. That's very kind. Oh, it's, it's awesome. I would certainly um, suggest that everyone buy your book and read it because it has um, a wide array of information. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself first? Okay, um, and I have to say I, I really enjoyed your books um, tremendously too, Paula. It, it is such a um, such a welcoming guide to someone who's looking for how to connect. On um, maybe doesn't they don't want to jump into some of the more difficult, darker aspects of of our of our lives, but they can just they can really just get into the spiritual health, um, connecting to their inner self. Your book truly connects that that aspect to it, and I really appreciate that about your book. Thank you. And um, for me, so I'm from um, New Northern New England. I'm from New Hampshire, and I live in Maine now um, for, for many years now. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful state. We're, we're connected with many lakes, beautiful coastline, lots of mountains. And I feel very privileged to be in a location where I could grow up connected to nature, hiking all the time, spending a lot of time in the woods. My mom was, uh, was a biology teacher. My father was a, a very um, intense fly fisherman who – we would, we would hike into back remote ponds in the middle of nowhere, and um, that was my upbringing. And so that led me to doing a lot of um, a lot of hiking and adventures early in my life, which led me to writing because of some of the more dramatic things that it, it happened to me, and I felt like they had to be shared. So my writing did not actually start from a um, a spiritual well. The outdoors is spiritual, I guess you could say, but it didn't start from that energy side. It started more of just the physical, uh, wild aspect of what it's like to um, to be away from populations in places where you, you, you don't have help and maybe you get stuck in a mountain somewhere in a blizzard or you – various things that occurred. So that's how I started writing in college, and, and it, it's been quite a gap um, between the first book I, re I wrote called My Wilderness – which was just on a totally different level to now with the illusion of us, I spent a lot of years researching and a lot of, um, a lot of time invested in this book because um, I feel like this truth is so important to be known mm -hmm. to the masses that it can't be held back any longer. And your book connecting with mine forms a very good stepping stone wow. guide towards enlightenment uh, teachings, I would call it. It absolutely does. And it's interesting what you said too about, when you um, would go out into nature, and that was your spark, wasn't it? And yeah. you said to me when we were talking the other day that everybody needs a spark to ignite them, to get them started on their path, and everybody's is different. When, when I started my path, it was because I went to a friend's house to watch their um, two um, Dobermans, or, yeah, Dobermans, and so I went to watch the dog, and whenever I was sitting there over the weekend, they had some holistic health um, vitamin and herb magazines. And in the 70s, from West Virginia, that was really crazy thinking. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is this trash on the table? No, we did doctors, and that was it. Um, and, but it sparked something in me to begin to recognize that there's so much more to life than what is put in front of us. Exactly. One little tiny event caused that, too. It wasn't even a big thing. It was a little tiny thing. Yes. So each person has their own spark. And I think that the two of us together talking, we really can spark many different things in people in ways that we won't even know that we've sparked something until we hear from them. And hopefully we will hear from people who have their inner fire that it, it's all consuming, isn't it? When yeah. you get that, that ignited, you're just your set, your trajectory is totally changed. I think I think based on the fact that we are light beings, and um, we're we're like a we're like this energy light bulb. And yeah. the more we pursue truth, and the more we pursue kind of this path along life, where we're we're 
growth, we're, we're putting growth into our life and we're, we're raising ourselves, not bringing ourselves down. As long as you do that, you, you intensify your light within your, yourself. And you were talking about that flame. I think they're all just talking about the same thing. And it, it, it's like once, you, once you're on this path, you get this energy boost for being on it. And it just tells you that that's the whole purpose of, of this journey all along. And we all have different aspects of, of where we'll go in that journey, but it's all fundamentally the same similar path and just takes different forms and, and different routes. Yes, it's just with different colors, different people, different sensations, we call it different names, we look in different places, but it's all the same. It's all Joseph, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. We are yeah. on this journey to find our authentic self. Once you're sparked, that door is open. And you, you can, once you step through that door, there is no going back. No. Nope. There is none. No matter how much we try or no matter how much society tries to get us to look the other way, to think that we're wrong or that we're mentally ill, <laughs> it's not true. No, and absolutely not. We have to be careful with that, don't we? <laughs> I think we need to we need to realize that um that there is a paradigm that, that is trying to be protected for how we define our reality. How we define our reality in terms of we're supposed to get up every day, work as many hours as we can at whatever job we can do, get, and then come home and have a few remaining hours of watching TV and whatever is taking up our time and we get no time for ourselves. We get no time to work on ourselves and any, and any time we do, we try to seek out pleasure because our lives are usually so miserable that the only time we get off is like, we'll sit and watch a movie and eat a bunch of pizza and a bad food because that's the only way we can find relief out of this world. And so if people have time and they free themselves and they, and they just say, I'm not going to be constricted by these, these constraints of what our lives should be, they can realize that there is, a completely other paradigm of reality that's been hidden from our knowledge, from our awareness that is a, is a truly spiritual connection yeah. that is as hokey as to that may sound as some, they say, well, that just sounds new age or, or whatever it is to them. We are, we are light beings that are, that have consciousness that is being um, housed in this vessel. We're not just these, these, these monkeys that have a brain that's smart enough to have consciousness. That's the great trick and the great illusion that's been played on us. And if people, people think that way, I call it the Darwinian theory, which is based on like ant colonies, which is not based on humans, which is the idea of all, our purpose here should be following in the animal kingdom of domination and competing for resources as much as possible with, with one another. And if you look at ant colonies, all they do is war against each other and, and drone and, and work as hard as they can, and that's their whole lives. And that's what humanity has been kind of shuffled towards. Mm -hmm. And so if we then step back and think that if, if all of Darwin's theories are wrong, mm -hmm. evolution is real, but that doesn't explain everything, and it, goes, it has a much longer time span, then we must understand that all what we've been taught to, fr to frame our entire scientific base of everything is wrong. And it's based on incorrect summaries to get us to compete because it's the opposite of competition is collaboration. And when people all over the world collaborate and all the minds come together, we find success in, in expansion far faster than anyone could ever imagine. For sure. And I'll tell you, I really think, well, the Mayans saw it. We knew that there were changes coming. We knew that the world would never be the same again. We were hoodwinked into believing that the end of the world was coming so that more products could be sold and people could be afraid to even... And fear, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even closer. But here's something that, that I think is very interesting. We have been created on purpose. All of the faculties that we have are for a reason from the original creative source, right? We yeah. created as a spark of God. Part of being human is this part of us that I learned about. Rebbe Zartars taught in, to Paul Twitchell, I forget which book it was, about the fact that we have this part of our brain that makes things become a habit so that we become comfortable. It's like yeah. there's mirror neurons, right? Have you heard of mirror neurons? It's where we've got neurons in our brain that actually mirror what's going on outside of us. Yeah, so yeah. 
naturally, automatically reflect others rather than going within to, to reflect on what's going on in our own dream state, in our own meditative state, in consciousness. Exactly. And so we have this on purpose, this part of us that follows the crowd. So we have been easily hoodwinked into believing that the media is correct, the, um, the, three, main, the, experts. the three main religions, yeah. um, um, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, they've, they've, they have their own wonderful parts but they're there to control as well. Exactly. And so we are easily controlled, but it's time now, it's what the Mayans saw. Many people are waking up, many young people. I mean, you and I talk, I'm 63. I so don't mind telling my age, simply because- I'm 32. You're 32, you're just a young thing. Bless <laughs> your heart, and good for you. You have a lot of life ahead of you to spread this message. Thank you. Yes, and my message is, the journey that I've lived over 63 years and what I've learned so that others can can do it too. You're here to pick up the ball with, you brought this awareness in with you and you also came in at a time when there's computers and internet, you can get your word out there. Exactly. In books, only books, there was nothing. It no. was on the inner or visitations in, in my bedroom at yeah. night by, by um, spiritual beings. So I like to think of it as the generations carry a torch of truth that they hand down to the next generations. Yeah. And it's up to them to, to then take and disseminate that information and then expand on it and then carry on that torch. I call it, it's the torch of truth, it's the logos. Because truth is eternal and it is constant. As much as people don't think it is, there are natural laws to the universe and how everything works. There is a design to it and such in such a way, because of the fact that it's designed, there are rules that go along with it. And because there are rules, those rules formulate the idea that there are truths because those truths define what is real. And so if truth is the most important thing that, that matters and it, it follows all those things like love and all those vibrations, if that's all that matters, then we, we, we simply must carry that on to the next generation to then pass it because so much of our history, people don't really realize, but from everything from the Al Library of Alexandria all the way up, they were burned and destroyed deliberately to, to hide this information so that we wouldn't be able to disseminate this information to the next generations. And then you get this coercion of, of people who are teaching their kids incorrect history, but also incorrect perspectives of who they are and how they should define themselves and how they should pursue their dreams and how they should feel about themselves. And so if we can redefine that and then disseminate that down within the generations, we can change the world. We can, and the world is ready to be changed Yeah, because the timing is, is perfect. The, the, the universe is conspiring to light us up. We right talk, now is the time. This is it. That's right. The, the, the planets are aligning and the, the solar flares and the, the coronal mass ejections, all of those things are happening now. And we're not being told in the mainstream media that all of these things are actually physiologically changing the chemical makeup of our bodies. And so people are just naturally waking up and being young you didn't have to spend so many years with a crush of yuck of lies put over you like my generation really has a lot of crap in baggage it, it becomes more and more difficult to to the, i call those layers they're layers of of what's holding you back and the more the more years you have of those being put on top of you the more difficult it is to shed those layers yeah but it is possible. It is. Absolutely possible. Somebody could be, there's, um, the plasticity of the brain is real. And people can, no matter what age, people can wake up. My mother lives with us, and um, she's 92. We went through my father's death. It's never too late. It's never too late. And mother literally was privileged to be awake and aware during daddy's passing. And he still comes to see her in her bedroom. 
he'll sit on the twin bed right beside her in the middle of the night when he's been passed now for almost four years. And, but he still exists. And so she's getting to learn that we are eternal, that the law of conservation in science is real, that we cannot right. create energy, we cannot destroy energy. The atomic bomb that we created still exists. It just exists around the earth with radiation. So we don't ever die. We exist before we're born. We exist after we die. In, in exactly, and so what, what are the implications if that information became known that, that our physical body is simply just a vessel to house this, this third dimensional experience here on Earth? Because that's all I believe it is. I believe this is a hologram of reality for us to be here because really nothing is actually physical. It's all just vibrational frequency of matter that we perceive in, through, through our brains to, to define reality. And so if we redefine ourselves and our purpose, being eternal consciousness and energy and this just being a vessel then what happens you take away the greatest trick and tool they have which is fear because by controlling us through the mortality of our own death people will be gluttonous will be carefree in everything they do because they want to get as much out of this life as they can because they think that whole yolo stupid thing you only live once all that stuff gives you this false paradigm that you have to trash the planet as much as you can because, hey, you're not coming back. You're not so coming matter. back, so what does it matter? Yeah. That's the truth. And you know where that gets planted? That becomes planted in our subconscious mind. Yeah. You know, the, the people raising children don't realize that what they do to their children, what their children watch on TV, plants these these ways, so automatic, resp automatic response. I used to hold our children all the time, and my mother would say, that's too bad your children won't remember how you loved them and held them. And I said, they may not consciously remember, yeah. but it forms the foundation of, is this world a safe place, or is it not safe? Should I go out and be all that I can be, or should I cower in my shell and, and I, exactly. act in rather than expand out? We, we, um, we're just energy beings, and so the energy we propel and give off is the energy that these small beings, like children, are going to receive. And, and with being development in every stage of their neuro neurological and physical structure as it, it, being young, when you're giving off this energy of um, you know, negativity or um, not being there at all and just them being alone, it, as opposed to if you're giving off the energy of love and somebody says, how are they going to remember love? It's gonna it's gonna literally translate into the DNA of how they how how they evolve later on in their life. It is our DNA is is a double helix DNA that has these amazing latent um, um, activation periods where yeah. if a if a child and if a person goes through these stages of their life, they get enough love. If they then challenge themselves to learn things in a certain way and they and they understand it, they will progress along that path. And that's the purpose all along. You can't cheat. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you can't, you can't be a bad person and reach enlightenment. You've got to become a good person, however that means is. Whether it's giving away all your money and then learning the hard way and crashing, what you what we perceive as disasters are often the greatest gifts in life we could ever ask for. They are, depending on what we. It, it, we we both have enjoyed reading Barbara Marciniak. Yes, absolutely. And how um, they would talk about how we should not judge other people because you don't know that a beggar sleeping under a bridge at the age of 80 could wake up to write the most beautiful sonnet that would enlighten thousands of people. Who's to say that life was wasted? Nobody. So we should not judge anyone. Everyone's on their path. However, I will add to that, we should also, those of us who have awakened, should do all we can yeah give information to those who are ready and seeking greater enlightenment. I think we should try to see it as our duty to help as many as we can. You yeah. mentioned, in, one of the things I mentioned in my book that you mentioned also is uh, the Plato's cave metaphor or the allegory of the cave. Yeah. And this is a great thing to, to, to discuss right now because it references all these things. And yeah. one of the things I talk about is the idea of what the allegory of the cave is, is mm -hmm. humanity is enchained in a cave of its own awareness. And that basically yeah. is like, the darkness re represents our our um, our ignorance of, of of awareness of everything because it's been kept from us, not because it's not there. 
And so we are held um, by these false shit shadows on a yes. chain on the wall by fear. We cannot move anything. Yes. We're enchained through these shadows, which is fear, because it, what we realize with these shadows that are being projected on the wall in front of us is that fear isn't real. And the idea of, of scaring us is, is, is a manifestation of our negative energy that we propel. So if we don't feed into, in, into negative energy and fear, you simply, the shackles that are binding you, become free. And you realize that you're not a prisoner all along. Now that, and that means awakening. That's what that means, and it's a transition of your consciousness to an awareness of the truth. Now, this is the most important part that you touched on. Mm -hmm. What I mentioned in the book is, if somebody awakens, hey, great, you've awakened and you've left the cave and you're now outside running around in the sunshine, but if you don't come back in that cave, if you don't go back in to then help people, you're yeah. just as bad as those people that are in the cave because you're choosing, you're choosing to ignore all of the the horrible um, con psychological control and the sadness and, the, and, and all those things that are being felt in people. And I say, if you don't go back in, then you're, you're, you're missing the most important part of your path all along. Hmm. And I, I agree with you. I absolutely think it's important because I know that being of service is the most important thing to be here to help other people. Yeah. But I think we need to also with the allegory of the cave is to recognize what does that mean? Like, what is it that we're looking at? Like when they, the, the prisoners were chained to the cave and there's the rampart behind them and the light is behind that and it's projected onto a wall. The wall and what we're looking at with the wall is television. It's yep. movies. It's, it's education. It's all these it's things. Education. It's our churches. It's, it's all kinds of, of, misperceptions the illusion of us yes and even <laughs> people who are playing their parts don't know they're playing a part exactly yes. you and i love that you have the illusion of us because my first book this little tiny book that's a little workbook that i i wrote in 2000 and it's called being soul in a world of illusion and that's what we are cool. in and that's the people that's the prisoners on the wall they're looking and they believe that's real. And it's yes. people who have awakened to put information out there and find the words that will help others wake up. Because it's like you said, they need to have a spark. And I get that. And for me, I've needed to find the right words. I gave a, a talk, I'll give you an example. I gave a talk when, I didn't start college until I was 49. and. Um, I ended up with my master's at the age of 58, so it took me a few years. But when I first started... Well, at least you did it. I know. It was awesome. It was awesome. But I spent my entire life studying, but I was not in the realm of academia acceptability. So I needed some letters behind my name. It, it's my age group. I think not going to be so much yours necessarily. But here's what I did. I was I entered this speech contest, and I gave a speech on... Um, finding the right answers, because that's what Albert Einstein said, is it's so important that we find the right questions, because we're not asking. If we watch other people, they're not asking the right questions. So my whole talk was on asking the right questions. So it was about why are the three largest religions the ones in the war? Because 9-11 um, had just happened right before I gave this talk. And why are we not taught about the sanctity of sex and the beauty of uh, an intimate relationship? Instead, we're talk, we talk about, um, is abortion right or wrong? You know, we, they take us off track of yeah. where we should go. And so my, I had my whole speech. It was 20 minutes. I did it beautifully. My professor said, that's awesome. I love it. I got an A. Well, whenever they gave the, um, at the end of, who won? I came in last place. And he said, why do you think you came in last place? And I said, because the judge had no earthly idea what I was talking about. <laughs> he said, exactly. So what are you going to do about it? And I keep, said, keep I'm, writing. I'm going to go out. I'm going to find new words to describe, and I'm going to find the right audience. That's right. That's what I'm doing. So we have to remember that. We have to be speaking to the right audience. We could go to a church down the street or to another meeting, and they're not going to get what we're saying because they're not awake yet. 
I know. And you know, it takes, here's the thing though. It takes a certain kind of, um, of, of conscious soul to be able to go down this path because yeah. one of the things that I end with my book that I've discovered of this whole thing is it ultimately takes a lot of courage. And courage, courage yeah. is a word that's been very lost from our society because people don't really understand what courage is any longer. And what courage is, is doing the thing that's very difficult to do that you, that, that you is the last thing you want to do. And, and here's the thing. The reason why so many people don't understand so much of the truths of our reality is because it is like going down, traveling down the rabbit hole, the metaphor of traveling the rabbit hole, because when you are staring down to this hole, and even though it is a hole that leads you to light, it still is a hole because once you jump in on this path, there's no coming back. You cannot go backwards. You're now falling in this pathway. And think about what falling means, right? If you're standing still before, in your whole life and you're staring into this hole and then all of a sudden you're falling, you're now accelerated vastly to the point where you were before. And that's what this path provides. Yeah. If you start learning about your consciousness and mm -hmm. your and your energy and what you really are and you start ridding yourself of only thinking yourself as a physical body mm -hmm. and it's called it's called mind over matter. If you can get to that point and then start having complete awareness of compassion for others and, and treating yourself respect and then trying to be the best you can, you'll realize that there's a path that's unfolding very quickly in front of you. And yeah. it'll be like the previous life that you were on before almost starts to collapse and not matter at yeah. all, all around you. And I encourage everyone to have courage yeah. because you need to, Carl Jung says, to expand consciousness, is, I'm paraphrasing, it's, it's ultimately not about seeking the light it's about seeking the darkest points and then and then bringing, light. bringing those out to yourself yeah. and then exposing them and, the, and if you can do that if you can what is it once you can once you can rid all fear you will be free and and that's what we need to do not just be happy and just look at the light and, and never take anything difficult on we must go into the difficult things yeah and if we look back again at the allegory of plato's cave once the people have come out and they have now opened their eyes to the light of new awareness and yeah. understanding, and they've now expanded their um, viewpoint, it would be scary to go back in, wouldn't it? So It's, it's, also, it's always scary. you got to have a lot of courage. You really do. We go, yes. Anytime we have to step outside our comfort zone, it's scary, but we Very. don't jump in. Like, I was never one that would – go to the high dive and jump right off into the ice cold water. I grew up on a lake. And so it would be freezing cold. So I would get wet a little bit at a time. Some people jump in with both feet and really quickly off the high dive. And yeah. they have their own experience, don't they? Neither one's right, neither one's wrong. It's finding out what is our individual path. As long as that person still goes in. <laughs> well, Not just you know, as long as the person flipping water on themselves doesn't end up deciding halfway through that they'd rather yeah. just go sit in the shoreline. That's right, that's right. But people will. Yeah, because they will. There are people born all over the world, and many people are living lives of extreme drama and trauma. Yeah. But that's their part. There's always a balance in this world. And so there's black and white, up and down, in and out, over, under. So there are those of us who are awakening, but I believe that in order for us to have this exponential possibility of awakening, there has to be the other side of that in this world. It's all duality. Everything is framed in duality. Yes, it is. And so we, many times we have to surrender to the fact that this is necessary for this person and just may the blessings be. To you have to learn lessons learning. yourself. Yes. You, you can't tell someone, you know, if you have a, a, a kid who is, um, is constantly just out partying late night, driving everywhere crazy, maybe that person needs to just spend a night in jail just to learn a harsh lesson because if you tell them these things are going to lead to something bad and they say, ah, I'm not going to, I don't believe you, it, 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 what the idea is, if you don't go through an experience directly, whatever that experience is, it doesn't have to be in, uh, in a negative way necessarily but if you don't go through the experience yourself no matter what someone tells you it won't it really won't matter right and this is what we say when we say truth can't be taught it yeah. has to be caught so somebody has to have their mitt up to catch the ball or their heart open 
to catch the truth. That's or right. They have to be at a particular point in their spiritual evolution that it's time. And then no matter what you do, if God or higher power, whatever it is that you want to call it, wants you, it's going to get you because it's time. You've spent many lifetimes, many generations evolving and changing and growing. You have that memory. We have genetic memory all through the lines of time. That's what I believe it really is. I believe that our DNA changes over each lifetime to give to latent on the lessons that we've learned. And what kind of lessons are there? People would ask. Everything from balance to um, to to patience to um, compassion. I think compassion is one of those things that's huge. Yeah. Souls who are more compassionate are, are almost always much older souls because I think that's, um, that's something that needs to be really learned is, is saying, I'm not going to do something just because it benefits me, but I'm going to have always have compassion and try to think about those around me and those that I'm part of. And that's not easy. A lot of people have very, a lot of difficulty with that. And you know what? It's the hardest thing we'll ever do because it requires us to, to balance the two things between self-awareness and selfishness. Those two things really are so close together. They're like walking a razor's edge. Yeah. You have to recognize, is this an act of selfishness or is this an act of self-awareness? And yeah. the one thing that I've learned that helps me differentiate between those two are the three easy questions. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? And if we can truly, in our heart of hearts, answer those questions affirmatively, then we can be assured that we will be as close to where we need to be on that razor's edge as possible. Yeah. We are here to help others. We're all one. We're just helping. You're just another cell in the body of stardust. Yes, of the millions of universes out there. We are all one. It expands and contracts the breathing in and breathing out of God. So we are in the point of expansion, and then it'll be, it'll be pulled back in. Then we start again, and we go out, and we create again, and then we pull back in. It's an endless creation and, in in creation and destruction. It's, it's always followed by each other. People don't know that anything that's ever destroyed, you know, a supernova, supernova or whatever it is, it's always followed by rebirth. There's, it's a perfect balanced system. That's why we must understand that duality and the idea of bad things and good things occurring. They're just simple. They're simply just um, different sides of the same, of the same experience. They're just different ways that it could go. And a lot of those um, ways we perceive as negative are simply just something that leads to a better thing later on. And we can't perceive it at the time because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So what I tell people is in the book that I talk about is if you can truly get um, connected to yourself through eating healthy and becoming balanced and meditating and, 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 and truly learning to listen to yeah. listening to the life coach, right? The life coach within us, that intuition voice that, that we all have, that higher, that higher conscious sense that we have, if you can hear it and the way you can hear it is by raising your vibration through, like we said, through eating healthy. But if you can start to hear it, the more and more you hear it, the more it'll help you along that path. And what may seem like a bad decision at the time, based on if I feel like I should do this, but it doesn't make sense, I would say do it because we definitely have this guidance system, this life coach that is helping us all along. And we just simply need to be able to hear it. Yeah, yeah. And trust and, it, I guess. But be yeah. objective always. You know, yeah. never, just don't ever just take something and do it. Oh, my goodness. No. But that's learning to listen, isn't it? We have to listen really deep within and stop and think, is this something I should do or should I not? Because we'll get a nudge. We'll get an inner nudge, that little intuition that we get that says, don't do that. I think I told you this when we were talking. Exactly. That absolutely, sometimes I'll get that little nudge and you'll say, don't do that. Don't say that. And some, in the past, I'm getting better, but in the past I would say, oh, no. I want to do this anyway. And, and you disregard it, right? Yeah. I want to see what the consequences will be. I would do it anyway. Sometimes it's been worth it because I've learned tremendous amounts, but sometimes it's not been so worth it. So we learn to use right discrimination, knowing what is the right thing to do and what is the right thing to say no to. And it reminds me when you were speaking about, um, you were talking about a, um, a 
making a mistake or having something as a, a stumbling block I thought of. Yeah. So think about what is it, what is a stumbling block? Let's say it's a piece of cut stone so that it's a nice rectangular piece that helps us go up a path. That piece of cut stone, we could trip on that. But we could take it and we could move it to someplace that's going to move us to be able to see out this window a little bit better so we can see further in the future, further in the distance. We be it becomes a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. That's right. That's a good and way to put it. That's what we do in life, isn't it? We absolutely learn how to make lemonade out of lemons because yeah. 7 billion people can go through the same experience and they all come out with their own interpretation. And nobody's right and nobody's wrong. The only difference is how far is that interpretation going to take you and which direction? Take you further up and in or out into the physical world and into the illusion of Plato's cave? Which That's one? right. Yeah. And so here we are in this, in this reality, this third, this third dimensional reality where we can ascend to a higher dimension, but we need to determine what our, what we're going to do with the time we have here is, you know, are we going to, um, are we going to just sit around and just get as much pleasure as possible and then get as much wealth and then die? Because, you know, this wonderful quote that they, that they talk about when they when people are asking, the deep questions later on in life, they say the majority of people who die, the thing they always say right before they die or their biggest regret is that they didn't take enough ch chances. They didn't do enough experiences. It's not, I wish I had gotten this much money or I wish I'd become this billionaire or anything. It's always, I wish I had done more because when the cards come down and when we're at that point where it crashes down to the realization of what the great lie of our life is, the great illusion, we realize that all that matters is experience and, and, and ex growing ourselves, you know, thinking I'm your, your good example is say you're with a bunch of friends and you're sitting on a bench and it's in the shade and a bunch of friends want to go and they want to spend the whole day doing something, something great. They want to go on the lake. They want to take a hike and you feel a little bit tired and it's a comfortable spot. So you say you're going to pass and you mm -hmm. maybe just go home. You now just passed up on an enormous opportunity that could have changed your life in fundamental ways that you could never imagine, like that Jim Carrey movie called Yes Man. We must realize that the experiences that were offered in life, we should almost always take them because there are, there are different voices inside us that we must be tuned to listening to. And the voice that most people think is intuition is actually their ego trying to control them through, you know, these um, – Mm -hmm. Very sinister means of oh, I just want to be comfortable all the time and never never take any chances and be and yeah. conform, and we need to learn to not listen to that voice and, right. and push that voice out and, and hear so, that other life coach voice. Yes, yeah, step outside that box. Yeah, and it reminds me of there was a, a word that I've not heard anybody else use it, but it's a word that I learned from Paul Twitchell in the '70s. He said we needed to learn randomity. And randomity is learning to change on a dime and not to worry about a quick decision to do this or to do that. I, I made a really quick decision at one point to move to Oklahoma. I'd never lived off of Maple Lake where I grew up. And I was 52, 53, 55, something like that. And I just decided because of a dream, because of, uh, well, it's, a, it's in my book, but it's a dream that absolutely made me look up a certain person, and his name was Vardrip, and he had come yeah. from the inner plains to teach the Native Americans about the white man coming, and that times were going to change and help them spiritually grow through all those changes. I decided then and there, at, when I woke up that morning, that I was going to move to Oklahoma, and I was going to study my Native American heritage. Good for you. And I did not know I was Cherokee until I was in my late 40s. And so I decided, So I went to my mom and dad and said, here they were in their 80s. And I say, uh, mom and dad, I'm going to move to Oklahoma. I'm going to move to Tahlequah, Oklahoma, because that was the seat of the Cherokee Nation, the end of the Trail of Tears. And you know what my mother said to me? That was where she was born. Wow, isn't that I interesting? I did not know that until, but yet it came to me in a dream. And, and something I, brought you there, and that turns out to be the place that she was born. Yeah. And it, There's it, no coincidences in life either. No. But these There's things, only synchronicity that you must find. Yeah, and that's the randomity. 
We have to not be afraid. I didn't care if other people thought I was crazy, that I just left my husband and divorced him after 25 years and made a decision on a dream to go to Oklahoma. Well, good for you. But yes, I did, and it was awesome. The good. benefits have been awesome. I have since come back, remarried my husband, and we are blissfully in love. So there's a purpose for everything. We yeah. can not be afraid to follow where it leads us. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, I like to think of the path that led me here too, because I think it's important for us to have awareness of thinking about how we got here, because it helps us learn from the mistakes and also to to. It almost seems like when we when we review things we've done in the past, it seems like we're not learning. But I think through repetition and through repetition of, of going over all these things is how we actually really do learn. And so by thinking of how, how did this path get me here, it, it makes us aware of what we're doing. And it, it gives us all, it, it basically, if you have awareness at any point and you, and you always build on that awareness, you can never be too aware because awareness is the key to conscious expansion in, in, every, in every way. Never, ever, ever end. That, that surprised me when I, that first I, that light bulb went off, that it never ends. No. Not that we're seeking perfection because we never gain perfection. We just are always evolving, breathing in and out. We're following the breath of God in and out, in and out. And it's like peeling an onion is what I thought of while you were talking. Yeah. Because really our consciousness, we're hemmed into this stuff that we've been encompassed these lies and the illusions of what life is all about and what we're supposed to do and think and feel. We have to peel those back a little bit at a time like a lotus flower you know, yeah. the lotus flower unfolds and each of the layers are an aspect of our life's training and lifetimes of training and the Mayans saw that it would be different and that simply that as something else that it is that all of time is beginning to exist simultaneously the past can intervene in our future and in our present, very quickly and very often. Remember when um, Barbara Marciniak talked about that, about the fact that, because I remember her asking a question one time, what would you do if you from a thousand years ago showed up for you in this lifetime? It was yeah. very, but that's what happened to me when I went to Oklahoma. Because me, when I was a Cherokee, came to me in my bedroom so that I could see, oh, it's my Cherokee part of me talking. And what, what? And the question is, if you had not had your Cherokee roots, okay. would you have ever been in this path that you are now? Because yeah. I believe that, you know, we need to understand that the the DNA and the in the various conscious levels of humans on Earth are vastly different, and people have these genetic roots that trace back to these spiritual connections, like Native Americans, where that latent that change that that that's gone on, and you've come back come back and forth and you're connected through that, um, that DNA is now part of you, that transitions to you having a totally different conscious awareness. And so we are looking into our ancestry is important because where we came from is, has a direct relation to where we, where we are now, especially if we need to go zoom out on a historical level. And, yeah. and you really need to learn about human beings and, and the stories of kind of where we came from and who we are to realize how incredible we really are. And the idea is we are this unbelievable species that is trying to be made believe that we're not and that we're made to be believe that we're just a monkey rather than this incredible light being. And that's, that is the great solution. It's, it's giving us this false perception of yeah. just our very identity. That's like, that's like going out and telling a horse that it's a chicken its whole life. And then it eventually realizes that it can be running and galloping on the plains instead of just sitting around a coop all the time. We, we, are, we are that species that is then learning all of the things that have held us back weren't, weren't real. Exactly. And it, it's just like there's a movie called Finding Joe. It's about Joseph Campbell. It's an awesome movie if you've not watched it. It's a documentary-like movie. And um, in that, there's, a, um, there's a, a, some sheep. And there's this little boy who's told he's a sheep, but he's not a sheep. He's actually a lion. But he's been raised with the sheep, so he thinks he's a sheep. This lion comes along one day and says, what are you doing with these sheep? You're not a sheep. You're a lion. 
and he takes him out, and he grabs some meat, and he makes him eat it, and it wakes him up because his roar was only a little with the sheep. But as soon as the lion woke him up with that that meat, that raw meat, reminded of who he was, became bigger and bigger, and he could not go back to what he was was told that he was. Because he realized who he really was. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's what the truth is. And so this path we, we're talking about here is, is it doesn't have to be that you understand the whole thing. It has to be the fundamental level of def redefining yourself. That's the place to start is redefining who you are and who what your body is and, and, and how amazing you are. And, and the idea that, that you're just a, a, a conformed worker who – works a nine to five job and you know someone that comes up to you and says oh hey how are you your what's your name and what do you do and then you tell them your job or something and that and that's the last thing that we should we should yeah. define ourselves yeah. um it, instead and we should be looking at the fact well, well who are you really yeah. what are your what are your amazing interests are you a passionate person for raising raising flowers are you are you someone who yeah. wants to paint beautiful art are you someone who wants to design technology to advance this everybody has this aspect of them where they're their own hero and they yeah. just simply need to find what that is yeah and don't ever be conformed and, and and whatever your even if your parents try to pretend oh who are you special for you know go do your do the job that you like i did never ever let anyone in our life i don't care who it is if it's your mom or dad it doesn't matter who it is always be objective in finding your own path from what feels right within you because yeah. our parental figures are not necessarily in many cases right well because they've got something else in mind they've got well, a yeah exactly financial, um um what's the word balance financial career is what in their mind and that's not what's best for us. We have to go out on a limb. We have to not be afraid to do what nobody else is doing, to think ways that nobody else is thinking. You know, we have to not be afraid. But we're taught to be afraid, to be very afraid. Like Marianne Williamson, remember? She said um, that people are not so much afraid of, um, of what they don't have. They're too much af they're afraid of how powerful they are. You know, of, of their powerlessness, that's what she said. They're not so afraid of their powerlessness. They're afraid of power. And we're pa very powerful beings, very powerful yeah. beings. And when we wake up, we begin to recognize that. We begin to live it and breathe it. And then other people around us absorb that energy because other people, we commun I mean, we have many bodies. We have physical, astral, causal, mental, emotional, spiritual. We have all these bodies. And when we're connecting, all of those bodies are communicating. And we have to be aware of what are we telling people? What's our emotional body telling people? Because if you're a fake person out here, you're living that illusion, but inside you're really scared or angry, or doubtful, whatever the negative feeling is, other people pick that up. No matter what facade we put on, they yeah. pick that up, and it's and they then get scared. They then don't want to be around us. But if we are awake and aware and positive and hopeful, and we're moving forward, we will bring others with us who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And, and and it, it comes down to a vibrational frequency level of, of us because people don't really understand what that means because it's been kept hidden from us. All we exist on is simply just a vibrational frequency. We're just a vibration. We're just, that's what, in the human beings, we are a, a, a select certain vibrational frequency. That's what makes human beings. And if people want to get back into the, the those things that blow your mind, that spark of wonder, how about the idea that, the Great Pyramid of Giza has a harmonic frequency that is exactly tuned to the human being. And somebody wants to tell me that's a, just a coincidence and, tell, and because the narrative right now that's being given is that the Great Pyramids all around the world, especially in Egypt, were built by primitive workers. And yet, if we, if we want to go into these lies about that have been kept from us, and is, is the idea that you can take the Pyramid of Giza and it's a direct representation of um, – the ratios of the scale of the planet earth these are these are harmonic frequencies that have been that have been harnessed yeah. 
during certain parts of the earth and they create these these um these pyramid designs are possibly all over the universe around the earth and these and yes on purpose. so these energy uh, these energy centers exist all over the earth hawaii has one mount shasta the egyptian pyramids are right on top of one there's many all around the world and these these ancients before the darker hand kind of rewrote, rewrote religion and stole all this spirituality from us they were used as knowledge temples for raising human consciousness and extending basically extending life think about the idea of this pyramids are told that are made by primitive workers to us and that their purpose is for housing pharaohs yeah. think about the idea that there's never been a pharaoh ever found in a pyramid in history all of that has been a lie to yeah. to lie to prevent us from knowing their true purpose because all of these things feed into a great story a great story that that matters about where we came from exactly. and where and where we where we yeah where we are designed from essentially mm -hmm. that is so i i love that because everything is on purpose we think that we've been another thing we've been hoodwinked into believing is that we are um um, the human race is the most intelligent they've ever been, or the most connected they've ever been, and, and they're, they're not as a race. Because think about before the written word, how did people communicate? You know, they communicated by their thoughts, and they communicated by the emotions and the feelings and the energy that went across and with the pyramids and with that stuff that sent the energy around the earth. Yeah, we we have a history that is completely unknown to us uh, that we people don't they're not aware of because it's part of a control system. As difficult as that may be to, for many to to understand, history is what defines our reality now. And if history is is written by the victors, which it always is, always. and it, it can determine our future, then then all of those things in our past. Are, have been kept in a predetermined selection of what we can define as real. So the pyramids are just one aspect, but we must understand that if we just think about the fact that the earth, you know, billions and billions of years old, had dinosaurs on it for hundreds of millions of years, and then these cataclysmic periods with mammals changing and, and, others, and other intelligent races coming here and helping design various things, this cosmic history that predates us, human beings' time here, like you mentioned, is but a tiny blip oh, in the cosmic okay. history of what is of what has occurred on this earth and what has occurred in the solar system, the Milky Way, and the universe around us. We must framework our our reality and and define it for us of remembering what has been lost to us of when you walk outside and you stare up into the heavens and you see the distant suns, some that are possibly not even there anymore from how far away they are, the idea that light can travel so far away and in the fact the fact that it once it reaches you it, that star that sun is no longer there anymore right. all of these wonders of the universe need to bring us back to knowing that we're on a planet that's going a thousand miles an hour around the sun in this massive um revolving around this in the solar system that's a tiny piece of just this little fragment of the outer reaches of our milky way galaxy and bring back the wonder of understanding that there are millions of Earth-like worlds in just uh, worlds in just our, our our Milky Way galaxy alone, let alone the trillions of other of other galaxies that have the trillions of other Earth-like worlds. We're now talking about trillions, trillions. of 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 of, of Earth, Earth uh, planets with life, and yeah. a lot of these of these we need to just redefine this what's called pseudoscience and, and understand that. There are species that are millions of years ahead of us, yeah. and to put that in perspective, our entire time here is a few hundred thousand years of of, of our consciousness right now, being yeah. at a point where it can advance to somewhere a few hundred thousand years. Yeah. Imagine where we'll be in a million years. Wow, I know, and I feel like we are this great experiment. This we are absolutely. If people can go from total subjection, total darkness, darkness to seeing the light. And many people are awakening. When you're talking about the universe, I love when I think about our galaxy and how it's this, 
this like oval kind of shape. And how we're down here in this little corner. The outer fringe. We're just in the very outer fringe of it. And isn't it interesting, I'd like to point out, there's a lot of amazing similarities in why Earth in the human beings got to this path. And the more I look at it, the more none of it, of course, none of it is coincidence. But the, mo the more I look at it, there is this, there's been this plan all along. This Earth just happened to be located at the outer fringes of our galaxy, supposedly a very easy access point for all these transient races that are going through. There's, there's thing number one. Number two, the Earth happens to have the most amount of gold and various important precious metals of any planet in our solar system. Yeah. That's amazing to consider because human beings are under the perception that gold is this pretty materialistic, materialistic thing. Yeah. But reality, gold may be the most if not the most important element in the entire universe itself, because it is the only, it is the only metal, the only element that allows a frequency to pass through without being disrupted. And think about if a ship full of every, every precious metal we have sinks to the bottom of the ocean and they recover it hundreds of years later, gold is the only thing that hasn't tarnished. It yeah. is the forever element. And that's why perhaps what we look at our ancient history and why other beings maybe came here, wow. gold, seeing the fact that we have the most gold of all and we just happen to have these pre-homo sapien primitive people that are just happen to be walking around, it's <laughs> no coincidence that all these paths that have lined up for, for, our, for our destiny here have coincided with this, this need for an outcome, I'll call it, this need for the human experiment to mm -hmm reach a certain point as fast as it could, perhaps because it needed to. This accelerated evolution, I will call it, of, of humanity. Very awesome. That is, it's so awesome to wake up and start studying these things. And Amazing. It blows your mind every day. It does blow your mind. It does blow your mind. And there's never an end to what we can learn and what we can you can read the same books over and over again or have the same conversations and new things come to light. I remember when I was going to school, um, one of getting my master's, one of the teachers I, I asked in class, because in psychology it's a little different. The mind is already created and the brain is there. Yeah, and yeah. I said to her, well, where does original thought come from? And the teacher said, there is no such thing as original thought. And I'm like, there's no such thing as original thought. She said, Conformity no. at, its, at its highest levels, right? It's the truth. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, and she's my professor. There it is. Yes. And it's like I thought about Albert Einstein, and he would go do these thought experiments where he would literally just sit silently and think and think deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's how he came up with his, his scientific formulas. Yes. Isn't it amazing to consider the fact that our society is modeled after the idea that you should absorb this just information, just like That's kind of like a robot, there. right? Absorb information that number one is in many ways incorrect and also detrimental towards a certain outcome to kind of project us the wrong way. But also remember, give the idea of the fact that if if we're supposed to absorb all this incoming information that's incorrect, mm -hmm. then if the, if there's a path that we're, that is right on the idea of everything we learn is 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 grazing us to this higher level of ourselves, then people would want to learn, right? Hi. And you mentioned Albert Einstein. In my book, I mentioned this fa fantastic quote. In society, we're modeled that intelligence is based on what can you just take in and then regurgitate, right? Right. In reality. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds of our time, formulated, like you were saying, he determined that the greatest form of intelligence is actually imagination. Because yeah. imagination, if you've ever seen the movie Inception, it's the, it's the idea that we can create worlds within ourselves. We are the creators, mm -hmm. not just these, these ignorant workers that just take in information. We are the, the creators that can manifest our reality. And if yeah. you start thinking on that level, then you, then you realize that if imagination is the most important thing, then why is most of school and most of, of our world revolved around the opposite of imagination? You know, imagination is, is almost is something that is completely lost and stolen from us now. Nobody's encouraged to imagine. People are encouraged to learn this. And then those minds are the most gifted through imagination. Like I, and I talk about this. They 
are the ones who get the bad grades who are then thrown in the gutter of the system. Who get medicine for ADHD. Yes, because, because they're not conforming. Yes, the idea of saying somebody has a high metabolism, it's then thrown into saying they need Ritalin or something because they're, they're not normal. In yes. reality, if everything is based on a vibrational frequency, the higher the vibration someone exists in, the higher the potential they, ha they have for intelligence, but also the higher, the higher the factor they have for nonconformity. And that's why the system deliberately targets those who have imagination and are not going to conform. And the other ones, the ones that get all the straight A's, their parents go around with cars with bumper stickers saying, yeah. I got a straight A kid, and they get built up, and they're the defenders of the very system itself. Well, and we were talking about the, that there always needs to be a balance. Yes. Well, those kinds of things have to go on so that those who are waking up can begin to recognize that they're co-creating with yeah. everything they think people exactly. are co-creating. We don't need to be, like you mentioned, I love the, the thought that you gave me around Albert Einstein, and I knew that he always did the thought experiment. And, and in my religion, in Ekankar, we, we learned soul travel so that we can go into other universes and other places of, of existence, so we can take classes and learn and study and do all this and then bring it back into this world with us. It's what Albert Einstein did. But what we're learning is that we co-create, and people don't accept that. The collective consciousness of the earth, yeah. Is co-creating. And, not, and, and that's why television not. is is trying to push us towards everything being based on fear and death. Because if if everything is based on fear, war, and death, the, the idea of where I could cover two stories. I could cover a story about something, some instability with a bomb going off, or I could uh, cover this story about a new um, incredible um, invention that's been created that's going to change solar power forever or something. The media... The first thought is people will say, well, they're going to they're gonna go towards a message which is of death because it will sell more. But really, it's on a much deeper level. It is a conformed propaganda tool television uses to, if everything is given to us based on a fear and war mentality, then that is what we will manifest because that's what we'll think is reality, right? And so the news and TV, what they do is they, or they used to do before – all these inventions of the internet and, and breaking us away from that point. Right. They try to have us all pre-coerce our reality towards this negative fear mentality because the most important idea of this is a conscious level of a human being, their, their vibrational structure of, of everything that leads them towards of, of learning truth and, and, and functioning in their life. Fear-based consciousness is the lowest vibrational frequency they can exist in meaning if a being is in a fear mentality they will always always there's i don't care what fear you have in your life all fear is part of the same paradigm if fear is in your life it will keep you in the lowest state of consciousness you can exist in that is absolute proof it shows you there what they're trying to do yes and down in the gutter here's a perfect example of of that when i was watching television because it goes into our health model too. I have a big problem myself. I work in addictions. And so I, I really have this thing with our, our um, um, medical model of drugs for everything. Absolutely. And, no. And so I was watching television. You know how all of these big super bugs have come out, super viruses, and they don't know what to do with MRSA and with, I forget what are some of those other ones, but the big one about the Olympics and they're afraid to go. They don't know how to it's talk. always fear, right? Just yeah. Always. And so they had a, they were interviewing this gentleman on television about antibiotics and the super bugs are getting super because they just keep outsmarting the antibi antibiotics. And so he was talking about the, the interviewer was asking him, well, now how are we going to come up with a new um, antibiotic to help this? If we Some can't vaccine or something. Yeah, that's right. And so the guy finally says, after a little while, the guy says, here's what we've got to do. We've got to start studying probiotics. We've got to start putting probiotics in our bodies so that the antibiotics are not necessary. And the guy, you know what they did? They immediately turned the interview off. They said, thank you so much for coming today, so and so. Absolutely. Time for commercial. And it was like so blatantly in my face 
Isn't that, isn't that awful? And people, we, we must understand that there is a control system in place for this information. That's why certain information is released and certain information is not. The medical industry has become so corrupted, it is a sham of its for, former self. I mean, these, the ancient shamans and the ancient proprietors of what medicine used to be, Thoth and all these ancient ones, it was, medicine was based on all of these natural components found in our earth that could help us in a positive way. Medicine is now, how, how can I take this so it won't kill me? That is a gross, um, disgusting use of even the term medicine. And I talk about that in my book. Medicine is no longer medicine. It's poison. And th the very factor, the way that that was diverged was through the decision where the medical industry was allowed to be corrupted by money. See, money is what corrupted it because if money is then in control of medicine, it no longer beco becomes about healing. It becomes about profit. And you can't patent a natural plant. Therefore, all of these components that would heal and, and not provide profit are not used. And so medicine became a massive corporation-based institution where all they do is sit in labs and use artificial components to create a, t a temper um, temporary fix for something that would then lead to something else. Artificial compounds in pharmaceuticals are never, ever cures. I'd like somebody to find me Someone who took some pharmaceutical and then it, it, their whole life was transitioned and they never took anything ever again. I bet that that number is so small that it's like less than one percent because these, is come out somewhere else with another symptom. That's yes, awesome. these artificial compounds are the are the anti solution. We must find solutions that are natural solutions within within us. Do not tr trust these so called health experts because. The fact is that autism and neurological diseases, among all these other things, diabetes, all these things that are derived from food and medicine that were so-called told us that we're safe, have spiked five, six hundred percent, if not thousand percent in some cases, and it, that is not okay. It is a direct correlation between between medicines, vaccines, and foods that we must stop listening to experts and take our health into our own hands. We really do, and I agree with you. I think that it's also important to, to say that there are times when the medical models need it. They do help sometimes with fixing broken bones and um, some of the oh, things. I don't, I don't mean on that level. I'm That's talking right. about on a level of, of, of healing yeah. um, mentally. I want to make sure because, when, when, because I love holistic healing. Yes. But that's a, that's a, a preventative kind of uh, keep your body in balance all your yes. life. Find that before it gets so bad, yes. something. So we need to start from the beginning, as young as we can, eating healthy food, yes. drinking a lot of water, good healthy water. Water is, I think, the most important thing of anything we can do for ourselves. We're like, what, 90%, 80% water? What are we? Yes, we're, we're water beings. We're just, if we're simply just electric, electric water energy beings, that yes. if you don't drink water, it's like you're not giving the most important thing to your biological being that you could. It's like giving yourself oil. You know, we're just filling ourselves with the most toxic thing we could, sodas and alcohol and all of these things. They are extremely toxic to our physiological and our conscious state. And we must understand a very difficult thing, a concept that we, I want to tell people that we, we must understand is that fluoride is put into 70% of all of the of the public drinking water in the United States and that is of a late, of a recent survey a couple of years ago and fluoride while it's true it does strengthen teeth enamel it is a neurotoxin and it is extremely detrimental to both our neural development and our pineal gland activation which is something that i encourage anyone to look into what the pineal gland is this ancient third eye that's been talked about you know anytime you see a symbol at top of a pyramid for this eye figure and all these things this third eye all throughout history, all it's been meant to be is this pineal gland, this ancient third eye of our in, embedded in, within our brain and understand that fluoride, besides being a neurotoxin, the number one thing fluoride does, if you want to just say like why, why are they using it, is because it calcifies the pineal gland and, and renders it 
incapable to, to be used by the human beings so to, to the point where the majority of human beings on earth have their pineal gland calcified and, un, being, and unused right now. And right. The, the pineal gland is the key to deciphering truth, in my opinion. That's, and that's right. And, and you bring me to a, a very interesting um, point. Given that there's a purpose for everything, the fact that we now find ourselves living in a time in the history of humanity when there are so many um, avenues out there that can bring us harm, our food, yes. our, air, our water, our Man. body, our medical model, you name it, our mental yes what we're getting, everything. That is like part of the game. I'm reluctant to call it's it. very disturbing to think about, isn't it? It is, but here's, yeah, I think here's part of the trick, is not going down the rabbit hole of anger at that illusion. Absolutely. And that manipulation, but recognizing, thank you for that opportunity to rise to the occasion because you're showing me how far down we can go. When what we really need to do is we really need to open up and be awake. Yes. And, and don't let those negative things. Yes, there are major negative forces that want to prevent our conscious awakening. And as we awaken faster and faster based on these, you know, these um, zodiacal house alignments and the vibrational changes of everything, that there's an increase increased need to keep us asleep and that's why water education food and even air has been targeted in such a way as uncomfortable as that may be to, to many people to understand the reason for that the, the deepest reason is to prevent us waking up because right. if 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 that's true it would be like taking the great veil off of our heads and all of a sudden we like wake up and realize that our what are we wasting our all of our lives doing what have we been spending getting massively in debt for school learning if, if we're not going to be pursuing the things that we really should be pursuing and so this great lie and this great secret it's not a conspiracy theory it's 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 reality it has been hidden from us and if you start looking into any of the things that we talked about from the pineal gland to vibration to any of these things you'll quickly see that it's been suppressed for a very long time deliberately so that we don't know. All you have to do is take out your dollar bill and look at the back of the unfinished pyramid. There is a need to keep this information only at the top to prevent the pyramid of what this um, structure of humanity is from gaining awareness of this information. And my job and your job, Paula, is to just kind of tear down that paradigm and just say this information is is available and is, is um, is allowed for everyone to, to have it in their life. Right, and the other side of that coin that is part of our duty and our job and our purpose is to recognize that the other side of the, the balance of the, of the uh, pendulum yes. is also the universes. All of the, the, the uh, planets are all conspiring. All the universes are all conspiring to help us to grow so that we can grow exponentially. So, yes, we are here mired in all this stuff that, yes, they are trying to keep us down. And whoever they are, whether they even know that they exist. Just, did you ever see the movie? That's a whole other topic we could go down. That's, that's, that truly is the rabbit hole when you find out who they are. Yes. And, and I, could, I could go into that with immense detail, but I don't know how far in you want to go with that. Well, and not that far. I want to go more okay. toward <laughs> the where people wake up and what they do and how. Just, how just keep it be up. known, just to keep it, just to say this. Um, they, to keep it at a higher level, are these elite families. And that's all you really need to think of them are mm -hmm. these massively elite families. And the number one, what you could look up, just look up the Rothschild family, look up um, any of these families like the Roth, um, the Rockefellers. These families control all bank banking, financing, and basically those things. And I don't, I'm not going to go any deeper than that. But that's essentially where if you look into it, you'll realize that this is real. And and if 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 money rules the world, then then those who have the most money can simply control how it goes. And those with power want to keep the power. Yes. And the down policy was never going to work because we can never have enough. Yes. We're, we're insatiable. We want yes. more material goods. All I do is watch television to see the bigger houses and the all the. The stuff. American dream is what is polluted. The, the idea of 
if if you live this life and you work this job and you and you follow the rules, you will be happy. And that is the false reality, the great illusion. Wherever that's why everyone is miserable and taking all these drugs and and and, and you know drinking themselves and just getting over obese and all these things. They're all simply to me, they're 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 factors of people being um, unhappy in life and and not being able to find the real path that they that they really wanted to take. Exactly. Exactly. And it's all an illusion. Yeah. So, you, how do we, how do we present what we know and help people to wake up? What are some ways out of the illusion? Okay. You want me to take that or you want to, you want to go, go on? For it. You go for it. Well, the first place that we need to start it, 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 like we were talking about how we need to define our consciousness and us. But I think even before that, we need to define our awareness of even where we are. I, I, I seriously think the first place, no matter where you are, is to start by thinking about externally closing your eyes. You know, just close your eyes for a minute and think about the fact that you're on a planet. Like how crazy is that? The, the reality of this illusion of, of our life, the great Truman Show that we're in, is is that it's like almost doesn't exist, right? That that blue that blue sky is like a green screen, and we're kind of just going along like like rats in a cage and going in this maze. But step outside that and be like, we're on a planet, this incredible planet that has you know, continents and ecosystems all across the earth that, that are diverse and incredible. And there are th millions of species that, that coexist in this perfect balanced ecosystem. And we're simply one of those beings that's here. I like to think of us as the stewards of the earth that we don't consider ourselves because we just trash and destroy it. But we really are the stewards of the earth that need to, that need to help. And, and it is going to be a collaboration in the future. That's why sustainability is the only way forward for in terms of keeping our planet healthy and keeping our water supplies healthy and all these things. But if we define that first, say, okay, I'm on a planet. I'm learning in the world, the, the mountain ranges, the, the types of biomes that exist. Learn the world around you. Learn how amazing it is, and then learn that you're in the Milky Way galaxy. Perceive the idea that there are so many Earth-like planets that exist in our, in our galaxy alone, they could outnumber every grain of sand on planet Earth. If you go out and walk on the sand someday at a beach, just okay. think, think about that for a minute. Think about how many pieces of uh, grains of, of sand that is and then perceive that many worlds that have life developing right now we're talking you know we're on this pathway of we've reached this point in our consciousness in this awareness where we perceive both ourselves and where we are in the universe and there are beings all over the universe that are going through that very that very same moment right now of saying of of whatever they are of of learning of what they are and and, and where they belong so Put that into your perspective. Learn about the universe around us and right. how and how incredible it is. And then go backwards. Then go back to the self. Then redefine what consciousness is and where we fit here. And yeah. separate your Darwinian model of our ape-like view of yeah. just these apes who yeah. are here and we happen to evolve faster. Ha ha, we got here faster. Now we can destroy the planet. That's yeah. the total opposite. It couldn't be further from the truth. We are basically aliens. And that's the furthest that you need to, to know. That's the truth. And something that you said that made me think I had to write it down so I wouldn't forget is the, the being stewards of the earth. Yes. You know, we need to think about what's out there and begin to learn. We need to begin to connect to the earth to That's right. on the ground. And I think about Native Americans, how they were stewards. They didn't even break the earth to, to build their build where they live. They were part of it. They were, they were completely part of it. They so respected the earth, they didn't build basements. Well, now we have radon coming up out of the ground. Because the earth was not meant for us to disturb it. It was meant for us to live with it. Yeah. If, if, if we don't really even need to use the healing herbs and the plants on the earth. All we need to do is sit beside them. And the energy of that plant will come into our being and help us heal. All we need to do is go out and sit in nature. All we need to do is touch a plant, talk to it, hold it, and it literally will transform our bodies physiologically and change us. Yeah. We need to harvest things and tear things down and save them over the year and buy something from China and buy another fruit from the South America. We need to eat what's in front of us. Yeah. We need to eat what's available. 
because our bodies are meant to exist at that time in the in the history in, in of the year and get back to our roots like if we can get back to the roots of what matters you talked about how maybe we're not as, as advanced as we think we are maybe we have all these shiny tools and all these electronics but are we truly more advanced than these ancient native americans and all these pre-cultures before us i say no in so many ways to truly be advanced is to understand the connection that all life has and once you can understand that and you're part of it and you can understand the wobbles of the, of the celestial bodies and where that fits in like the mayans and all these all these other cultures did they understand their place with it they can see when when stars come up knowing the winter winter and summer solstices mm -hmm. understanding the seasons and then what happens they become aligned with them and they grow all the crops they need they no longer need to be dependent on killing every you know going around in, in bands and just ridding the world of whatever creatures they can just to suffice they can now grow crops they can raise farm animals now isn't it interesting that in our society in school one of the things that's been totally lost is the idea that people don't even know how to raise a garden anymore and yet they can go play around on their ipad all, all they want right to me if you don't have that knowledge of 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 growing a, a plant out of the earth that you're missing the, the total connection of nature and then you need to go back and take a walk out there in, in the woods and right. be in the right place and don't be out there in the pouring rain or walking out there in the blistering heat and saying, this is stupid. I don't understand how, how this is going to connect me. Everything needs to be in the right place at the right time. And you need to be optimistic about embracing events. So if you say, I've never been out in the woods, I've never experienced nature, but I'm going to go on a beautiful day and I'm going to be optimistic and I'm going to go with someone that can maybe help me share it with me. And I'm going to see that connection because for someone to think I don't like nature or I'm not connected who who bugs or that's gross being outside we're a species on this planet to think that you have no connection with the planet itself is very disturbing actually to think about when our bodies are actually made of the very dust because yeah. this year we die our body rots and goes back into the right. earth there's a there's a an element I don't know if that's what you would call it called argon and that's what's been discovered that has always been. It's one tiny little thing like an atom that has always been in the universe. And so when we breathe in, we breathe in bits of argon. We're breathing in the same air that, that was breathed by the dinosaurs. Yeah. We're getting the same information. It's, it's dust to dust. It's a cycle. Become that, yes. And we have to learn to recognize that when we step on the earth, we are communicating with that earth. And we are she is very much alive too, and people don't know that. Yes, yes, and the um, the one thing that we don't think about evolution. We think about evolution from the perspective of the eight to yeah, physical, just just purely physical. But when we think about when, and I said something about, and we were talking about um, that we're better today than we've ever been, at, or not right? Like they knew more than we did in the pyramids. They knew how to do those things. They knew how to mental telepathy. They knew how to place things to get energy from up in the universe. They knew yes. astronomy. The ancient knowledge that has been lost to us. That's what it is. It's the thing. There are those of us who are awakening to the fact that we are all one and that it's time now. It's the time in the history of the planet. Exactly that we are being given this opportunity. That's to right. So in that way, we are the best we have ever been. In our ability to open up, like you said about old souls who've been here before. We've studied and lived many lifetimes. We've brought all that information with us. And all of our past knowledge is coming in to visit us now so that we can explode in consciousness. That's right. And grow exponentially. Not only are we, oh, not only are we. Well, I, I guess the term "better" is kind of a loose term to say. Yes. But yes. I would say that this time we're in right now, that we're speaking, this moment we're in, is the most important t moment in history. The mm -hmm. most important moment in time. Yes. And people say, "Well, how can that be?" Well, if we look at history and we look at the history of the pl of the Earth and the in human species and all of these things that have occurred here. We will learn that if a conscious species is not in the right environment when it can when it can 
benefit in that environment. Let's say it's a consciously polluting environment where it's so controlled, like if you take a couple hundred years ago, and when people didn't have free speech and people like you and I were just burned at the stake, right? Oh. That time, it wasn't the right time. Right. It's time we're in right now with the internet and with the human collective, a massive 7 billion plus people, this is the time when all of this great expansion is occurring at such a rapid rate that most people aren't even aware that it's happened. They say, oh, t time is speeding up. I can't, I can't keep track of things anymore. Well, that's literally our conscious evolution of our entire species gaining speed on this. Now, what has happened in our history that has prevented this information being lost? There have been cataclysms in our history that has, that has caused the human species to have amnesia. And there's many writers that are talking about that now. And yeah. the idea of, okay, the pyramids were built by a much more advanced culture with much more advanced knowledge. What happened to them? And the idea is they were simply wiped out and that knowledge was lost. So that yeah. then, when humanity was then re kind of redeveloping itself, it mm -hmm. could be coerced into a totally different future. And that's why this information has been lost from us because there has been a redefining of reality when these cataclysms occur on the earth from um, comets and uh, pole shifts that occur. And I wanna mention that from the dinosaurs all the way to now, there seems to be this, this intruder planet on the, on the far outer, 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 outer parts of our solar system that has been hidden. And I'm not gonna go into that extensively. Or whatever that yes, planet X. But yeah. that explains every single cataclysm, these countless cataclysms, because what it essentially explains is, why have all these asteroids, comets, and all these things been disrupted so many times throughout history where they keep hitting us? And, and the answer is, has always been this intruder planet that has come through. And, and people, I encourage everyone to go look into that. And that's a whole other side of, of, conscious, of consciousness, this road to take. But um, uh, I, do, I do other podcasts with uh, Gerald Clark and Jay Campbell. We, we go into that. And that's another, that's another stepping stone guide to take. But for our time right now, we can simply know that this moment we're in right now is the most important moment that's ever existed. And it's, it's now that matters. Yeah. And so, that, but that's yeah. why people feel like it's speeding up too. Yes. Go, oh my gosh. Whatever needed to be put in front of you is put in front of you big time. Boom. And it's you've all here. got to start focusing because it, it keeps pulling you back, pulling you back. Won't let you get lost. Yeah. So start looking. It's going to keep pulling you, pulling you. It's like a magnet. It's a very powerful magnet. Yes. That's where truth. And you can't help but keep looking and seeking and asking. And, um, and, and the important thing that I think people need to recognize is that being everybody's so different, that everybody's path is different. Yeah. And we need to find our path. What really floats your boat? What is really of huge interest to you so that you can't not do it? What is the one thing you can't not do? And I, I remember when I finally recognized that researching, researching and writing and, and was and reading. Yes, yeah, has been all of my life I've been driving myself. In fact, I wrote a paper once in, for college, and it was called um, The Whys, The What, The Where's, and The How's of My Incessant Research. <laughs> it's like, because I can't stop. Yeah. Somebody asked me one day, what are you going to do when you leave here? When you're not in a physical body anymore, what do you want to do with, your, with yourself? And I thought, well, I know what I want to do. I want to keep researching and investigating, Learning. finding the link between all these things, between science and religion and spirituality and, and human beings and animals and the earth and that cosmos. I want to find those links to bring in the common language. Yeah. So every person has something that so floats their boat that they can't not do it. So what is that? Each person needs to ask themselves, what is that part of me that yeah. I not do? And start doing it no matter what anybody says. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that everyone has to go down this path of totally exposing this Exactly. grand history and our vibrational frequency and that, that doesn't mean that has to be but it does mean that that person needs to find what makes them happiness and, and drives them to have inspiration in life and that could be simply you spend your life 
cultivating rare flowers. So what happens? You end up writing a profound book that defines yeah. that generation of, of horticulture. And so everyone has their role and yeah. their and their piece to play in this story because it really is just a great story. It's yeah. a story that's culminating to a, a great outcome. And I believe that human beings, the reason why we're controlled so much and, and kept down so much is because we are the great culmination to that story. We are. We are. But we recognize this. And people are beginning to wake up to this fact that we are who we've been waiting for, aren't we? Yes. Stop running from yourself and just look in the mirror. Yes. Oh, but we're taught to not look in a mirror. Yeah. We've got wrinkles here. We've got, we're too big or we're too little or our hair's too dark. Or yeah, the superficial <laughs> stuff doesn't matter. Yes, but we've got to stop and we've got to start looking into our eyes. I did an experiment for um, about a year one time where I get up every morning and I do a contemplation every morning. And after I did my contemplation, I would go over to the mirror and look in the mirror and look right in my eyes, get really close, look right in my eyes and say, I love you exactly the way you are. That's nice. Do you know how hard that was? I would find excuses. I would think, oh, it's time to go do that. And then I would think, oh, I better go shower. Or, oh, I got to go get something to eat. Because it's hard to do. It's yeah. Just look in your eyes and say it with all your heart and mean it. You know? Love yourself, right? Find, find yeah. and accept, accept who you are. Accept who you are for, and whatever you think are, are um, faults or downfalls, com tr trying to compare to someone else you know, that's simply because you're trying to compare. There's no need to ever compare one person to another. We all have strengths that we can bring, and if you haven't discovered that strength, you're simply not looking hard enough. Don't just settle and say, well, I'm boring. I have nothing to contribute, and I have nothing to offer. Yeah. So you need you just need that little push, right? That little nudge out the door to go find it. And right. I think that anybody who's out in nature and is and is embracing exercise and spending time doing things, mm -hmm. they'll always find it. It's the person sitting around doing nothing that'll never find it. Yes, yes. And I always ask myself, if God or the creative source were to hide the ultimate gift of who we are, where would he hide it? Where would it hide it? Where would she hide it? In our heart, because we don't look there. No, we try, we try to look outward. We don't try to yes, look inward. We do. Yes, we do. But it's in our hearts. It's inside. We need to sit still, and we need to listen to that yeah. little small voice within. And I've got this one word that I use all the time. It's called pray meditation, and it's a combination of prayer, meditation, and contemplation. Yeah. And prayer is talking to the creative source, being aware of what you're saying at every minute of every day. Meditation is being still, listening for that answer, sitting still in nature, just being. Contemplation is consciously participating in that conversation so that we know what we're constantly praying. We know what we're constantly listening for, what we're hearing. Then we, we play the game awake. And it becomes an awesome adventure. Nothing yeah, exactly. down. Because then no matter what comes into our path, we're going to find the ultimate purpose for that thing that came into our lives. Exactly. And, and what meditation does that's so important is, is we have this pile of things that exists in our subconscious that we always worry about, right? I have these bills. I have this job. I have all these things that are bothering me. So when people, people are, their minds are not never still. They're always just chaos of stress and worry and all these things. And that conscious mind is never able to, to evolve to any point because it's always kind of stuck in, in um, the wheel, right? It's just running around a wheel all the time of, of itself. So or is what I've heard it called, the wheel of 84. Yeah, so what we, need, what we need to do is the fundamentals of meditation and what it truly means to connect to nature is to quiet the mind and to just take all of those things and exist only in now and none of it matters. Because really, if you're in a moment, how are you going to do all those other things in a moment? You can't, right? It doesn't matter because you can't do those things. So why not? Why worry about them? So ex always, whenever you're in life, right, and, and, you're, and, you're, and you're doing something, whether it's a sunset or walking down some pretty, pretty street in the summertime on, on the sidewalk, 
always think to yourself, am I in the moment? Am I in the now? Because if you're not and you're thinking, I'm really excited to see this movie in two weeks. So all I do is think about this movie in two weeks. You're not living in the now and you're not living your life. And if you live in the now, you'll realize and you'll discover very quickly that if the more you do it, the more you'll get so much uh, immensely more out of your life. Your days will seem like 10 days compared to what they used to. And that's not a bad thing. You'll feel alive for the first time. And this brings me back to what I told you, Rebbe Zartars had told Paul Twitchell, and that's that we've got this part of our brains that creates a habit. It yeah. creates a habit. The more we think positively and we begin to live in the moment through meditation yeah. and just learn to be, that becomes a habit. So yeah. that we're not constantly focused here and there and here and there. It becomes permanent, and it exactly. becomes the way instead of the, uh, the other way. Yes, yes. But here's something interesting. I don't. It, it's just something interesting that I recognize from my time of contemplation and meditation. Yes. When I'm laying there and I'm silent and I'm stilling my mind and I bring my attention back to the pineal gland. I like raise my eyes right up to here and I put my attention right here yeah. on the pineal gland and things kind of settle down. I actually can feel the energy going back into the pineal gland. And it feels so good. And then that little blip of silence comes in, and, an, and it, eternity is held in that blip of silence. But here's what's funny. When I'm in that silence, the first thought that comes in, it comes in, if it's a thought of the past, it comes in from the left side. And if it's a thought of the future, it comes in from the right side. Yep. I don't know anybody else that has ever said that, but I, it's what happens to me all the time so that it's like it even that's why it's called the right side well it's probably <laughs> and the right side is the creative side isn't the, it the and right it, 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 it directly translates i believe left and right directly translates to our brain lobes in the in the left to right brain and the fact that the right brain is the targeted brain for this whole thing because that's our emotional and intuition side and if men especially men are targeted to never have emotion, they'll never connect to their right brain. And they'll always be living purely in the left brain. And that is a huge, huge thing I talk about in the illusion of us, that we must understand that emotion, yeah. instead of running from it, is the key to everything. It is our emotion is what unlocks all your chakras. Emotion is what connects you to our deepest level because we are emotional light beings. That's all we are. And that's why we're able to be used with fear in our mortality because we, we worry so much about our state that we we're able to be led and controlled that way. Yes. And, and this, you reminded me of another thing that I learned. When I was growing up through all school systems, I was oh we were well I think everybody is I don't know anybody who's taught differently but that we are um, we have adrenaline and that whenever something dram dramatic comes into our lives we have this release of adrenaline adrenaline that causes us to fight or flight right we all yeah. hear it all the time yeah fight or flight you know what we're not taught and that I did not realize I was not taught until about a year or two ago that's that we also have the release of oxytocin. And it's just as equal as the um, adrenaline. That oxytocin has been termed, the, instead of fight or flight, it's, it's called the tend and befriend hormone. We're not taught about that one, are we? The Darwinian fighter, fight mentality of, of competition, right? It's, yeah. it's literally the same thing. It is, but oxytocin is also released. And that's the tend and befriend. And to bring Yes, it's things, the opposite. It's like collaboration, right? But it was that's all it is. Left out that yeah. we were not taught, and that's no. crazy because it's it's such a, a common way of being that we feel other people's emotions, and we have to learn to categorize that emotion and relate to it. And what does it mean to me? And how does it influence me? And how do I use my emotion to create yeah. a better world around me? I need both sides of the coin before I can really give a real picture of the whole thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the emo I cannot stress enough the emotional body and how important of it. You know, knowledge is only one piece of it because, because if you think about the, in in the intellect side of our left brain and the fact that we could just fill it with information, right? You just fill yeah. it with information. If you do that too much, you become dependent and dominant and reliant on the left brain only. And if that happens, 
you will never ever find balance unless you can get your right brain to balance. And it's, it's been called the divine feminine for, for thousands of years because, awesome. because basically what it means is if we are emotional beings, mammals, and that is our state, which is our, is our, is our, um, you could, you could use that to define us. Uh, we are just emotional light beings. Then emotion is simply the gateway towards everything else unfolding before us. Because if somebody is not connected to their emotions, if, a, if a, a man or a woman refuses to ever cry or whatever to it, to never connect to their emotional state, they will never go anywhere. And you'll notice these people everywhere. The, the pepped up, um, built up inside some some man who's, who's never hasn't cried for 40 years in what happens when they do finally release and cry and they cry for like two days or something yeah. we are not meant to hold, both hold in and not meant to um, to project like in, in to be kind of fed, fed off of our, our, our energy our energy emotionally negatively like using death or using all of those tactics to feed off our emotional state into kind of um, to take it from us and, and kind of, it's almost like a vampiric stealing of our emotional state and the opposite, right? Like the hippies always said, love is all you need is love. Okay. Love is the answer to everything because love is, is derived from our emotional state. It's kind of been in our face all along and mm -hmm. the peace symbol, I mean, if you look at the yin yang, right? The idea of this duality aspect, all that's trying to show us is the idea of if you find balance with yeah both the yin and the yang of, of ourselves, you will find your ultimate um, future based on, based on essentially balancing both sides of the yin and yang and, and, and light is always the emotional side. It's always the right brain. That is our, our connection to light. And so remember that whenever someone tells you, oh, stop crying or don't cry or if you're in a, a beautiful movie that's moving, something like Forrest Gump or Braveheart, if you're not crying, there's something wrong, and that's what I, that's how I see it. That's the truth, because we're afraid to connect. To yeah. Just, um, don't be afraid of it. So don't be a sissy, crying like a girl. Exactly, exactly. Even girls are made to be ashamed of Exactly. It, all society, don't cry. Don't show emotion in any, in any case. You know, a woman is told she's being hysterical or she's well, on her period or something just because she's acting out. You know, they used to lock women up simply because they yeah. were hysterical. And it, there was, a, was an actual psychological diagnosis, histrionics, hy hysterical. You become yeah. hysterical. They used to, there's a mental institution that used to be very famous not too far down the road from where I am. And they literally, a man used to be able to go into that hospital and say his wife was having her period and she needed to be locked up because Isn't she was Isn't that awful? Just oh, disgusting. It's somehow it's how we've gotten to men in the domination of the world, and that brings up another topic. The world has not always been a patriarchy. There have been times in the history of this world that it's been a matriarchy, that women yes. have moved. And, but exactly and I believe that's the future. I think women are the only thing that can basically save us, because the way that I view this dark road that that mankind has taken down all these wars and destruction. If we didn't have this divine feminine and this side of, of females mm -hmm. to come back and balance us off, men would have destroyed ourselves long ago. We, we owe everything to the feminine side. Any man that thinks that the idea of feminizing themselves is somehow lowering them, they're completely off track. When you balance yourself as a man from your emotional side, you will feel more testosterone. You'll feel more energy than you ever had before. It's the total opposite. Do not let them tell you that because it's not true. Yeah, because think about the yin and the yang symbols. Yes. You can have the symbol without the yin and the exactly. yang. Exactly. You just you so lose you, balance. You, you lose total balance. Yeah. Man and woman together create the 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 whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Yes. That is literally true. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts because yeah. less or more are gathered. And when you have the masculine and the feminine combined the same goal and they're combined and they share a space and share energy and share love and share thoughts and um, share a purpose, that creates a huge ability to go out and 
rule your own little universe. Maybe not rule the world, but we rule our own little universe. Our little bubble, our bubble of reality, which we do manifest. And, and I'd like to point, touch on that. People, uh, we have a collective consciousness on the earth of humanity and, and how it designs reality based on everyone is perceiving reality and we have these things like the doomsday clock that's trying to tell us we have like two minutes left until we kill ourselves and all these things we're constantly trying to be reminded by every movie possible and every construct we can that we're going to destroy ourselves and that we're going to just kill ourselves it's inevitable and so i it's appalling to walk around with people who are like seem like they're happy they're like yep yeah, we're probably gonna kill ourselves soon i'm like are you serious? How could you how could you allow that into your reality and accept that? We need to realize that we are manifesting our reality. We are the creators. And so we must we must hold on to our own paradigm of positivity and our own belief in where we're going in our future and not this dark destiny of destruction because I can tell you that we won't go down that route if we if we prevent it through our means of holding on to truth. Then think about this, Matthew. If there are multiple universes, we have multiple choices, and so with every choice we make, we're creating a little different universe. It's like a branch, like a branching off of a tree branch. And so those of us who are choosing the higher path, the higher road, the ability to wake up exponentially, to grow up, to grow, yeah. there will be millions of us who do that. And we will create that little world for ourselves. There will be those who will choose the drama and the hate and the fear and the control. Well, they can create their little world, but I don't have to make them part of mine. Yes. And so it, I'd like to really split in half to where there are those dualities yes. or, or not. That's an interesting thought I've had. That's really nice. It, isn't it amazing to think back, right? What do people think? that um, all these Buddhists and all of these, all these mostly men who have dedicated their lives to living in a temple and just meditating and, and what do you do? People don't really realize what they've been doing. What have they been doing all along, right? Yeah. They have been trying to hold on to our vibrational reality. They're trying to hold on to what we have left of this collective consciousness going this road of where we design our own our own destruction by allowing it through our perception of reality now if there are those who are controlling the paradigm these powerful um light beings like we're talking about they're dedicating their life to sitting on a mountaintop why because this reality of truth this path of humanity is so important that mm -hmm. We would just give ourselves to try to hold on to this vibrational frequency that holds it and to maintain it because without them, who knows if we would have already collapsed our paradigm and destroyed ourselves long ago. It's to those, it's to these souls who dedicate their life to truth, however that means is that I believe get the greatest honor in life.